96 yards. Hi again, everybody. Welcome to our Week 11 preview of Pac-12 football, along with the UCLA Hall of Famer, J.J. Stokes. Roxy Bernstein with you in a huge week. We don't even have to say what's this week. It's Stanford and Oregon. Before we get to that matchup, Let's take a look back at Week 10 and a record-setting performance from USC quarterback J.J. Matt Barkley, six touchdown passes at Colorado, two uh, touchdown receptions each for Marquise Lee and Robert Woods. Just a brilliant offensive performance by USC. It is a brilliant offensive performance, and when you look back at the quarterbacks that have been at USC, you look at Palmer, you look at Liner, those two, just to name a few guys that are Heisman and haven't accomplished that. He has two weapons on the outside, Matt Barkley does and he did an outstanding job of distributing the football. Six touchdowns is an amazing day. Well, the big matchup this week that everybody's pointing to, of course, nationally, College Game Day is going to be on the Stanford campus. They're on the farm for Oregon and Stanford at Stanford Stadium coming up at 5 o'clock Pacific time on ABC Saturday night. Should be just one heck of a night of football. Two teams held serve last week. A big road win for Oregon and Seattle against the Huskies. Stanford struggled a little bit early but overcame Oregon State. So now the collision that everybody was looking to, Stanford-Oregon Saturday night. How do you see it? This is going to be a huge game, Stanford-Oregon. It can be a, a big game for this reason. You look at Stanford, can they manhandle up front that Oregon defensive front seven? Can they do their job? I think it's going to boil down to the running game for Stanford to be effective. And when you look at Oregon, it's a team that Let's face it, their tempo creates everything offensively for them. Can Stanford hang with that tempo is going to be a key to these games. Well, Oregon's gotten a couple of key parts back the last couple of weeks. Darren Thomas, LaMichael James, they returned. Both played well in the victory in Seattle against the Huskies in the final game ever at Husky Stadium before they renovate that place. They're going to be off campus for a year and move back. But with, with Oregon... Last week in that game against Washington, what did you see that can carry them into this game? Well, what it boils down to is there's too many weapons for most college teams to really to really grasp one guy and say, we're going to take this guy out. Can you do that with Kenyon Barner? Can you do that with DeAnthony Thomas? Can you do that with LaMichael James, even Darren Thomas? Or then you look at Paulson at, at the tight end position. So there's so much going on that it's hard for teams to keep up with them. But if you can physically dominate them, there's a chance that you can win the game. On the other side with Stanford, the Cardinals have seen a couple of injuries the last few weeks. Chris Owusu probably is going to be out for Stanford. Uh, one of their tight ends, Zach Ertz, is down as well. Yeah, they have Kobe Fleener, Levine Toilolo got banged up at Oregon State. Will these injuries, you think, hurt Stanford going into this game? You know, I don't think it affects Stanford as much as everybody thinks that it affects Stanford. And I say that because they're a well-coached team. The guy that steps in their place is well-coached and knows his assignments, and I think that's what Stanford does. They plug a guy in and ask him to do this thing and do it well, and you'll help the team. And I think Stanford will be just fine. So again, Saturday night, 5 o'clock, Stanford, Oregon from Stanford Stadium on ABC. Also coming up Saturday, 12.45 kick down at the L.A. Coliseum as USC hosts Washington in a big Pac-12 matchup. The Huskies trying to recover from that loss to Oregon. The Ducks held the Huskies to 100 yards or fewer than 100 yards rushing. What does Washington need to do to get that rushing game on track against USC? Well, first of all, they, their assignment have to be specific and detailed when they go in this week. And... They need to get the ball, obviously, to Chris Polk and let him find his holes. If there are no holes, this guy is a game changer and a playmaker. He can do it on the ground, and we know he can do it in the air after last week uh, catching for over 100 yards. So they need to get the ball in his hands. For USC, it's funny that earlier this week, Steve Sarkeesian, the Washington head coach, talked about, you know, if I had to make a pick in the NFL, I would take Matt Barkley ahead of Andrew Luck. Are you buying that at all? <laughs> you know, everybody wants to stay in good graces. They're going to say and praise this guy, but in behind closed doors as a coach. I mean, Matt, we know Matt Barkley is no, really good. Matt Barkley is good. So is Andrew Luck. There's no question about that. But every coach is going to say that. But when you close the doors, we know what's being said. we got to beat those corners. We have to pressure up front, and we have to get him on the ground. And not just get him on the ground, physically put him on the ground and make him think about his throws. I think that's what Washington is going to attempt to do. Well, Barkley coming off the record-setting performance of six touchdown passes in the game at Colorado. There's a lot of great receiving duos in this league, J.J., and you look around the Pac-12. But is there a better one than Robert Woods, Marquise Lee, and what separates them? 
you know, they are, if not at the top, just 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 a step under because I still would lean towards Cal and giving that to Allen and Jones. But these guys have come on of late and they're playing fantastically. Marquise is doing an excellent job. I mean, he was the forgotten about guy early on in the season. It was all Woods. And now he's coming on strong. That makes a dual threat and it improves their running game for McNeil. So they're doing an outstanding job of distributing the football even better than they were earlier in the season. Next up is a huge collision in the Pac-12 South as UCLA, fresh off their upset win against Arizona State, right in the thick of things to play in the inaugural Pac-12 championship game. They're in Salt Lake City taking on Utah in a game where Utah needs it. If they win, they become bowl eligible. And UCLA, fresh off two straight wins, has to have a lot of momentum heading into Rice Eccles Stadium. These teams both like to do the exact same thing, run the football. Whoever runs the football better will win the game. When you look at John White, every time he rushes for 100 yards, Utah wins. When you look at what UCLA does, when they get the ball, whether it's Franklin or Coleman, if they have an outstanding game, they usually play better and win ball games. So whoever's offensive line can physically dominate and allow them to maintain the football, time of possession, and put points on the board, that will be the winner. Well, you can catch UCLA and Utah coming up 4.30 Mountain Time, 3.30 Pacific, FSN, prime ticket down in Southern California with J.J. Stokes on the call, as well as KJZZ TV in Salt Lake City. Also at 3.30 Pacific time on Saturday, you have Cal hosting Oregon State at AT&T Park, a game that you can see on Root Sports Northwest, as well as Comcast Sportsnet California, as Mike Pulaski and I will have the call for you. In a game that, look, California can get bowl eligible with this win against Oregon State. They built some confidence last week in the win against Washington State. It's the defenses that will be on display, J.J. Here's the two top pass defenses in the Pac-12 conference are Cal and Oregon State. Yes, and when you talk about passing game, you talk about protecting the quarterback. So if their defensive line play is going to be a big factor in this game. You look at Cal, I mean, they are experienced, led by Katus in the secondary. These guys seem to be in the right space at the right time. I like the way they play the game. They're physically aggressive, and they can get it done series that has been dominated as of late by Oregon State and Jeff Tedford's team trying to change things Saturday as Cal hosts Oregon State. It's Cal's home finale at AT&T Park. Coming up at 7.30 on Versus, it's Arizona State trying to bounce back from the loss to UCLA down at the Rose Bowl against Washington State up at Martin Stadium and a game that Arizona State, J.J., desperately needs. They're tied atop the Pac-12 South trying to fight to get into that inaugural Pac-12 championship game. Now, it's going to be cold up in the Palouse in Pullman. You won't want to bring your jacket for this one. A 7.30 kick in Pullman in early November. Well, it's not necessarily early November. It's getting toward mid-November now. What's Arizona State in store for? You know what? If they could wear jackets on the field, I'm, I'm sure Arizona State <laughs> would like to do that. And that's actually a key to the victory for Washington home State. Home field advantage? Yeah, home field advantage. The fact that they're coming into weather that they're not accustomed to. I mean, that involves securing the football. That involves, you know, holding on to the football if you're a ball carrier as far as a running back or catching the football as a receiver. If you're Washington State, that's second nature. You're in that all the time, so that's nothing new to you. That's one key for Washington State. Washington State needs to win their final three to become bowl eligible. Certainly would help them to start with a win over Arizona State. And the Sun Devils, J.J., really have established a running game the last few weeks. And Cameron Marshall is emerging. He's coming off a career best performance against UCLA. You know, he, he's done an outstanding job, but when I look at this, Arizona State offense, I say the passing game opens up the running game, and Marshall is the benefit of that, and he's doing an excellent job because where there aren't holes, he creates holes, and where there are, they don't have to be the biggest of holes, just the slightest hole for him to get through, and he can bust through that, and then once he gets out into space, which makes him hard to tackle. And our last Pac-12 game has Arizona at Colorado, 1230 Pacific time on Fox College Sports Pacific, and I know it's been a rough year for both sides, but there's some individual players that are having nice seasons, and certainly Nick Foles at Arizona deserves a lot of attention for what he's doing on that Arizona team. Yeah, he's a guy that, one, when you talk about yards and touchdowns, you, you have to think about Foles in this same category, and he has tremendous amount of receivers to throw to, so he's doing an excellent job, and, and in, in the division where quarterbacks get a lot of notoriety, and obviously with Stanford and Oregon taking a lot away because of their national ranking, Nick Foles is doing an outstanding job, and it's kind of going under the radar. A reminder that Friday is Veterans Day, so that means on Saturday at all Pac-12 football games that 
People who have served the United States Armed Forces will be honored with pregame and halftime ceremonies at all games involving Pac-12 teams, especially included, is Stanford and Oregon coming up Saturday night, 5 o'clock kick on ABC for two of the most prolific offenses in college football. So for J.J. Stokes, Roxy Bernstein, thanks for tuning in this week. We'll see you right here next week with your Pac-12 football preview.